Hastening the coming of the day of God. Hastening the coming of the day of God. All right, well, the Bible makes it absolutely clear that Jesus will return. And all of the New Testament is written in that light. It may be argued this idea of the day of the Lord is all throughout the Old Testament too. And so Old and New Testament are all looking forward to the completion of the plan of God. The full realization of Jesus' accomplishment in his perfect life, death, and resurrection. The full realization of it. And so everything is careening toward that day. And that should be foremost in our minds and in our hearts as well. Most often when we think of meeting the Lord face to face, we think of our death, which is not wrong. And I I think of at least both those ideas of Jesus' return as well as my going to him in my personal death. But my personal death is not the end goal. The end goal needs to be the full realization of what God has set in motion from the beginning of time and what he has accomplished through the perfect life and death and resurrection of King Jesus. We ought to yearn for it, look forward to it, pray for it, and be a part of the bringing of it. Did you hear me? Be a part of the bringing of it. You may say to me, Pastor Paul, but the day of the Lord, Jesus' return, didn't Jesus say somewhere that God the Father has already designated that day? The Son doesn't know, the angels don't know, but the Father knows He has designated it. So it's fixed, no matter what happens, that day will come on that day. Correct, correct. But I think this is the way to understand it. God uses means. God uses means. You may say, well, God didn't use means when he created the world. Well, you're right. But technically he did because it was through the spoken word, right? And that word is Jesus. The Bible beautifully expresses the apostle John as well as here in the apostle Peter, the second letter of Peter that we are reading. So yes, God uses the means of the word. And then after creation has occurred, God uses means to accomplish his purposes. God uses wars to to bring out his judgments. God uses the cross to bring about our salvation. God uses Jesus' perfectly lived life to show us his loving character. God uses means. He doesn't have to, but he uses means. He uses vessels. He uses tools. So what is the tool that God uses? What is the vehicle through which Jesus will return? That's the question. Let's get our bearings anyway. 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. We're looking at verse 12. It speaks there of the hastening of the coming of the day of the Lord. In other words, you and I have a part to play in bringing in the day of the Lord. What are the the things that we do to pull in the day of the Lord? That we get to have a part, we get to have a say in bringing in this day. The day that God is looking forward to, judgment day as well as salvation day, is that same day, and we bring it in. How? We get to be a part of the process. How? Two things are being shown here. First, verse 11, since all these things are to be dissolved, all these temporary things are to face the judgment of God, they will be dissolved. What sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness And godliness, as you wait for his return, what kind of lives should we live in? Holiness and godliness. Holiness or Christ-likeness. Godliness or Christ-likeness. What kind of lives should we live? Yes, in a word, Christ-like. How are you going to prepare that life? How will you feed that life? 
Today, there is a call for you to redouble your efforts at godliness, working on patience, working on love, working on kindness in areas that you have, you have seen your weakness, where you have fallen in besetting or habitual sins. That, that sin that was, on the, on the, uh, uh, that was underneath has come to the first surface. Now, now you can kill it. You can put it in the grave where it belongs because it has already been killed in Christ Jesus. There it is. You know? Personal and corporate Christ-likeness. Number one, as we grow in Jesus' likeness, we are playing a part in his return. Secondly, there is a reason why he's not returning, and that is that not all of the elect from all over the world or all of his chosen, those things are theologically true. They have not fully come in. Then what part do we play? play? Evangelism. Evangelism. Look at verse 9. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, his promise of return and judgment, salvation, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. In God's character, there's a character of gentleness, there's a character of love, there's a character of patience. In fact, he himself is called love. And so he is patiently enduring him. He would much prefer to display his glory through mercy rather than wrath. So he waits and he waits for all of his children to come in. And they will come in. How do they come in? Through you, through me, through evangelism, through discipleship. As people come into the body of Jesus and grow in his likeness. As we participate in that work, we pull in. We pull in the second coming of King Jesus. Loved ones, let's yearn for his return. Let's, yes, let's yearn for our going to him personally. I think about that, I told you. But let's also yearn for the full realization of God's majestic plan, which he has accomplished in Jesus. God yearns for it. Let's yearn for it. And let's bring it in by Spiritual disciplines, cultivating the Christ-likeness in our own hearts and in the life of the church. Secondly, by reaching out and bringing in to the family, the kingdom of God. And in this way, we pull in Jesus' return into the present. We get to be a part of the vehicle through which Jesus comes. What a privilege and what a joy. Let's love, let's serve, let's do this with that vision in mind. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege, the privilege that you have allowed us to be the vehicle through which Jesus returns, through our personal and corporate Christ-likeness and through reaching out and bringing in more and more of your elect in this way. We get to hasten Jesus' return. Holy Spirit, accomplish this in us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So I
Completely. 